video, we're diving headfirst into the mind-bending world of Alice in Borderland. This Netflix series is a Japanese cousin of Hunger Games and Squid Games. The question is, did it hold up to the highly successful Squid Game series, or was it a total flop? Keep watching to find out. This 2023 Japanese fantasy psychological thriller follows Arisu, a jobless gamer who ends up in an abandoned Tokyo filled with high stake games, playing cards, and killer beams. There's no explanation, it's just deserted streets and a lot of confusion. Like a lot of deadly game social experiment type of stories, it's less about the games and more about the moral implications of playing the games. I think the trailer suggests that this is an action thriller, but in my opinion, it leans more towards a psychological thriller. And I think you'll enjoy the show much more if you go into it with that sort of understanding. There were bits in the middle that were paced a little slow, but I think it was actually necessary for you to fill in the blanks and for it to get you to the finish line of season one. As far as the production quality goes, I think the acting was really great. I can't pinpoint a performance that was particularly weak, but I will say I'm not sure about the character development outside of the lead character and I wonder if they're leaving some of that for season two. I'm not sure because I haven't seen season two yet. When I watch a show, I personally lean towards the story, but I will say in this show, the cinematography was really great. I think that the visuals were super high quality and this was by no means a low budget production. Overall, I found Alice in Borderland very enjoyable to watch and I'd highly recommend watching the show if you haven't already but if you have watched the show then stick around for the post credits review where we're gonna dive into the details okay so for everyone who's already watched the series let's get into what we loved what worked what landed Believe it or not, I like that the friends died early on in the show. It was very Game of Thrones vibes, and I think that that actually worked for this type of show. But more importantly, I think that it really helped Arasu's character develop, and it gave him a solid reason to want to survive. You know, it's one thing to say, I don't want to die, and it's another thing entirely to say, I have to survive because of X, Y, Z. So I feel like not only was it necessary but it increased the stakes. It was such a short season and yet they were able to tell a piece of everyone's story to the point where as a viewer I felt like I understood where everyone was coming from and I you know could relate to them. I did notice that they didn't dig into that one guy's story you know the suspicious guy Chishia uh, and I feel like maybe they're gonna dig into his story in season two but it's kind of weird because he feels like a side character and a significant character at the same time. Like I said, I was really impressed by everyone's acting performances, but I was especially impressed by the character Niragi because honestly, I've seen that actor, Dori-san, in a handful of different shows and I've never seen him in anything like this. So I feel like as an actor, he has a lot of range, which is super exciting for someone who likes to watch so many different genres. All right, on to the misses, the shortcomings, and the not so great moments. So not that I need a love story in every show, but if there is going to be a love story, can it not be confusing? Like I wasn't sure what was going on with that. And it just left me like, okay, we're, you know, what's, what is this? Like, I don't know. So I don't personally think this is a shortcoming, but I've heard other people saying that the show really slowed down when they went to the beach house and then it was too slow and they kind of lost interest. I personally think that the slower episodes in the beach house were really necessary in order to reveal key aspects of the game and in order to set the scene for season two. I almost feel like there were two mini stories in season one, where in the first mini story, they were getting into the game and kind of realizing like the high stakes of the game. And then in the second story, they were discovering how the game worked. So the story had a series of like rising actions, then it reached a climax and then it kind of dipped. And then there was another rising action, then it reached another climax and it dipped again. 
But throughout the whole story, I was entertained. So I don't think this was a shortcoming at all. And that was why I said earlier that you should consider this a psychological thriller and not really an action thriller because it's not all action, you know? Final thoughts, like I said, totally worth the watch. Season one and season two are available on Netflix as of this video recording. And with that, we've reached the end of this video. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I will see you in the next one.